Welcome to Thursday night action, Colts action. Nepean Raiders, Cornwall Colts doesn't get any better than this ball. One game left at home for the Cornwall Colts, and it's guaranteed to be a burn burner. Well, Rick, uh, last home game, uh, regular season, Cornwall Colts. Quite the uh, the pileup here uh, for uh, for second place. So well, usually at this time of the year, uh, the whole league they're in there ready to uh, divvy up the the spoils for home ice advantage. Uh, who's playing where, when, and why? And they're just biting their nails because they can't figure anything out yet. At this point in time, no, a lot of teams right in closer. We got the Cornwall Colts at 70, 79 points, five at Carlton Place, Nepean Raiders at seventy eight, Pembroke at seventy eight as well. So. Lots of uh, movements in the next couple of days. Lots of games. The only thing we're sure of is the Colts being in the playoffs. That's the one guarantee at this uh, at this at this position of the game. So we'll start out by this right here. A special night to Tyler. If you can focus in on that, uh, Jordan Piccolino, uh, 50 goals, 50 games, 102 oh, points. In Michael Ponarelli. I got <laughs> I got Jordan Piccolino on my stat sheet right here. Michael Ponarelli, 50 and 50, 100 and 102 and 100. Uh, what do we have? 102 points, 51 games. Real job well done by the Colts staff here just to get this out tonight. Uh, first 500 people in the arena getting that, so really special. Nice. So it's a lot of the kids outside, uh, just outside uh, the rink here with them, and, uh, you know, all the kids are excited about it. And uh, Great for Michael. Uh, another 100-point season by another Cornwall Colts, something that uh, we're used to seeing at this point in time. Yes, uh, we're used to having our big point getters, and uh, this year, at the beginning of the year, we're, we're looking at where is everything going to come from, and, well, we found out really quick. Real special, and uh, you know what? We're going through some of the stats here, and uh, all-time stats like we've been bringing all year, and uh, Jordan Piccolino sitting with 45 games played, currently 10th in wins for the Cornwall Colts. 2.9 goals against average, sitting 7th in Colts history. 24 wins, sitting 9th in Colts history. So right there, I mean, uh, that's pretty where, good. Again, where's the goaltending coming from? And here we go, year in, year out, we, we pull one out of the hat. Yeah, that last stat you had there, uh, 24 wins is actually the most in league play this year. One, one ahead of the next closest guy. So Jordan so. Pickley, definitely putting up the numbers, and uh, I'm sure he's striving to finish it off with a bang. Two, two games remaining here tonight and uh, Sunday afternoon in Carlton Place. Two big games, Jordan Piccolino playing strong at the end of the season, and that's exactly what we need heading into the playoffs, the strong goaltending. So another aspect of the Cornwall Colts that's working. We'd be remiss not to say it, uh, Coach, GM, owner, Ian McKinnis, 264 wins. He now is the all-time coaching leader for the for the Cornwall Colts, Al Wager. <laughs> the icon Al well, Wager, he is, absolutely. He's, he's iconic. Uh, there's no getting around that. Ian's been doing a great job, and Cornwall has taken over. Uh, With Al Wager did an awesome job previously, so one hand leading into the other hand, a uh, good handoff, uh, good for Ian, good for the boys. The first couple of years were pretty lean for the Colts where they would finish 8th, 7th, 7th, 8th, maybe one year out of the playoffs, yeah. but my God, they really turned things up. Yeah, I was just uh, going through the stats, we, we, we hinted on a little bit, a lot of teams have two games left, Hawksbury Hawks have got four games left for it, they good play, for Roman. Uh, oh, he's set the table, he, he's, uh, to me he's made the difference there. Roman Amaretto come in, made the, uh, just, uh, they, they won the other night, uh, can't remember who they played, but the uh, Hawksbury Hawks win the other night, they are now, they are now tied for 8th place. They're tied for 8th place with uh, Kanata, but they've got 4 games in hand, Kanata's got 1 game left, now Kanata unfortunately for them, they're playing Pembroke, <laughs> so I think it's pretty tight for them. Uh, Hawksbury playing some a uh, little, little easier, well, not easier, but they're playing Brockville, which would be pretty tough, but Carlton plays Smith Falls and Gloucester. So I think that's the big game for the them is like Gloucester. They, they need that one, they just need that one point because point. the Canada Stallions do carry the uh, tiebreaker of that. Yeah, so if they get that one there, and I think Canada's going to have a hard time against Pembroke, I kind of made a little, a little prediction here, Rick. I've got the Ottawa Junior Senators versus the Hawksbury Hawks to start off with. I picked Cornwall to win the next two games, so I'm a positive. Oh, you have you to know, be. I'm very... Uh, that's why we're here. That's right. Uh, against 7th place Smith Falls. I've got Carlton wow. Place losing tonight, so Carlton Place will be playing Brockville. That'd be a good series. And I've got Pembroke versus Nepean. Now, wow. <laughs> anyone, a lot of these here are pretty good matchups. Uh, you, can't, you can never count out Hawksbury, but the big team that I find dangerous is going to be the Brockville Braves. Third team has come on strong second half of this season. Well coached. Well coached. They can go from... Anywhere between 6th to 2nd, to, to 
But I, I'm telling you right now, uh, Brockville is going to be the team. I was to watch. thinking about uh, the, if, should uh, Hawkesbury get in the Ottawa Hawkesbury series, and you're looking at it, and it's like, yes, Hawkesbury can pull off an upset, but it, I, I am a strong believer in a seven-game series. Last year they played Carlton Place. Carlton Place was just in total disorganization coming into the playoffs. They're not that bad this year, but. Hawkesbury, I think, took advantage of the uh, Carlton Place Canadians last year. Ottawa's a totally different story. When you you got Carmine Guerriero, yeah. but now you're coming in with Charlie Mill, and that's a totally different dog. Yep. So yeah. it's going to be I'd be a very interesting series, and that's and by all accounts and purposes right now, I think that's what's going to be eighth place is going to be Hawkesbury. Ottawa's going to be first. Anywhere between two and seventh is going to be the fight. Is going to be the the hard fought now, battle now for tonight's game. Uh, out of the lineup for the Colts is, is uh, you weren't here for this. Billy Ulrich's not in the lineup due to a suspension because of so many. <laughs> I'm going to laugh at this one. So many goaltender interference calls. So many goaltender interference. That's what I was calls. told. Now okay. whether Stewart's right in saying this, it, he was informed by the league that he is suspended one game for goaltender interference. Billy's supposed to be coming in to talk to us during the game sometime. Okay. So if we don't kick him out for swearing or something like that, <laughs> we'll probably try to get down to the uh, the nuts and bolts of what's going wow. on. Wow. That's, that's a pretty late uh, suspension to be taking place uh, at critical time of one, the year. One game, yeah. So uh, at least we get it in and out of the way there right now. Okay. So I think uh, that'll just about do it for a little bit of a pre-game show. Yep. So for Paul and Rick, uh, we'll get back to it with the drop of the puck, the first period action on your way very shortly. At the end, love me arena. We'll see you then, guys.